Hi, so I here from Music Radar. Today I'm joined by the Korg NTS-1 Mark II. So this is the updated uh, Nutect digital synth. Um, it's the DIY, um, you know, self-build kit. I'm sure you remember the original one. Um, comparing the two, not much has changed, but there are some significant differences, which we're gonna dive into. Um, but mostly we're gonna sort of focus on the things we love and a couple of things we're not too enamored by with this uh, little synthesizer. So uh, let's get stuck into it. So I don't want to get bogged down into what the synth does and all this sort of stuff. We're not here for that. We're here to sort of focus on the good bits, the new bits. Um, so first thing that I love about this, they've updated the little touch strip. It's not like your kind of classic ribbon controller like before. Um, it's a bit more usable. That said, it's not, you know, the most sort of playable interface but it resembles more of a keyboard. We've got sort of the minor keys, the, the white keys as well, slightly easier to sort of differentiate between the two as we're hitting the notes. We can do that. It's much better. Um, it's slightly bigger as well, so that also helps. And they've done a great job in kind of like cramming everything in. It's the same size as before. So, you know, if you've, if you've made a case for the old one, this one will fit in it as well. Um, now, if you have made a bespoke case, it might be a bit of a tricky thing with the I.O. Now, this is a, an improvement in my book. It might not be to everyone, but they've taken the uh, headphone output stuck on the back. Everything is on the back now, apart from your, your volume dial and there's a little speaker um, port sort of holes where the um, speaker is. That's at the front, but all the I.O. is at the back, which I think is much better. Um, we've got added, uh, MIDI to go along with our sync. Um, it's USB-C. Um, we've got the uh, in-out, three and a half mil in-out, um, audio in and out. And to be honest, I think it works much better that way around. So well done for that. So to complement the uh, 18 note keyboard we got there, um, they've added a sequencer, which is good. Eight step sequencer, not the most in depth one there is obviously, but still a welcome addition. Um, we've got, um, you can change gate lengths, velocity. Um, there are live sort of um, sequence modes. You can sort of tap in an octave mode, so, you know, stochastic sequencing. It's pretty good, um, quite like it. Uh, this is what it sounds like. So yeah, like the sequencer, um, like I say, it pairs much better with having the um, your keyboard here. So it's kind of a bit more precise when you're inputting the um, sequencing, when you're step sequencing. The big difference with Mark II over Mark I is actually on the inside. Now this is a completely brand new processor. Um, and as such, NTS-1 does things a little differently in this iteration. Now, while these are good things because we've got even more modulation, there are more delay models in there and reverb, there's just more sounds in general. Um, it's a more capable beast. Unfortunately, when it comes to the DIY side of things, um, it's not backwards compatible. So if you've got any patches that you've been, you've paid for or uh, you've been creating your own or you've downloaded for NTS-1, unfortunately, they're not going to work here because it's a completely different processor system. So um, that's a bit of a downside. 
Another downside to uh, NTS1 Mark II is uh, the pots. Unfortunately, these don't change with um, your, you know, change of parameters when you jump from one um, parameter to another. So when I go from, say, the filter and I'm moving from one sound set to another sound set, the pots don't obviously move with it. This is where a rotary encoder would probably be a better option. Um, and it's a bit sticky when you're kind of performing live, which, you know, this whole sequencer edition means that they're kind of promoting that a little bit more. So it's a bit, bit of a shame that that sort of curtails that somewhat. Um, but it's a minor oversight. That's possibly something, you know, for another edition in the future. Um, but what we do love about this is the fact that it still retains its DIY heart. Um, the SDK is, is available. The Core Editor, which you've, if you have any other products and you've been using the um, previous NTS one, is a pretty slick program to use. Um, very easy to kind of create little uh, sound sets, like little presets. Um, you can save those states and then just quickly upload those. Um, you know, it's pretty instantaneous when you're syncing from, say, if you plugged it to your laptop or whatever, and syncing it to the, um, the Mark II here. It's very quick. Um, and then you can easily, you know, download um, oscillators and effects from the, from, I don't know, they've got like, there's GitHub pages. Um, Korg have even got their own DIY page where you can download a bunch of free freebies and they're really good. Um, in fact, this this particular oscillator um, is one of those. I've, I've downloaded quite a few of them on here and I'm really pleased with all of them, actually. I think they do add quite a lot. Um, to you know the already useful palette that we had with the likes of the saw wave, the, the triangle, the square, the wavetable. Um, there's plenty of room in this thing, so you're not replacing anything. Um, there's lots of slots for loads of oscillators, loads of effects. Um, yeah, it'd be be nice to see what people come up with now. Um, like I say, it's a shame that they're not backwards compatible, so apologies if you've I don't know why I'm apologising for Korg on their behalf, but um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame. But uh, hopefully, you know, some of the the more uh, prolific developers will will be hopping on board with this quite quickly and making more. And you know, if you're into it, get stuck in because it is good fun. That's what we like, and we're not too enamoured by with the Korg NTS1 Mark II. Don't forget to like and subscribe to uh, this channel and. Um, Hit the comments section, let us know what you think about Mark II. Do you have a Mark I? Um, will you buy a new one or are you going to stick with the old one? Um, how bothered are you that the old, you know, this isn't backwards compatible? Have you invested a lot in the old one? Um, we'd love to hear what you think. Um, so, yeah, do so in the comments below. Um, there's a full review of this up on musicradar.com, which I'll post a link in the description as well. So you can have a full read and rundown of what this thing can do. But until then, cheers. See you later.